I didn't seem to give much of an intro on this one. I don't think I gave an intro at all. But what I'm going to do here is I'm pimping the CPU, as you'll see. I'll fast forward through some parts, but it's interesting. You should watch. Okay, so now what I need to do is I gotta find five volts. I know the expansion connector because I was working on that. And I know that this connection right here where you got the two fingers that go together, that's five volts. So I know that's my five volts there. And anywhere silver is ground, so I can find the ground easy. I gotta connect up to five volts and the ground. I need to run a wire out to the front. So I'm gonna find the best place for that. It appears See where it says ICI or whatever number in system that is? That's a VIA that goes back to here. This appears to be 5 volts right here. I'm going to check that with my multimeter. And if so, that's a nice little place to connect to because it's got a really big run on it. Maybe I can chase it down for a little bit. So I'm going to go off camera for a second. I'm going to chase around with the multimeter and find me a good 5 volt source. Okay, I've done some poking around in here trying to find me a good 5 volt and I found one. I got it plugged into my bench supply here. I'm just going to turn the power on. All right, yeah, it's not, nothing's hooked up, but it's on. And I'm just going to verify that this right here is actually is 5 volts. And it is a nice clean 5 volts. See that little V right there? Nice clean 5 volts. And obviously this is a ground. And now I got to find me a good ground. So I'll turn off the power, I'm going to find me a good ground. Basically anywhere out here is good ground. But that's a nice clean 5 volts. I found some others over here too. That's a no. That's a no. Alright, so that was 5 volts here. I just want to compare it to what the 5 volts is over in this one here. Same exact amount. Okay, so it's not like it's going through a resistor and getting resisted down. It's the same amount. All right, so that's my 5 volt line there, and now I need to find me a nice ground to work with. And to do that, I turned the power supply back off. And now I'm just going to take my continuity, and I'm going to find me a nice place to ground that I can attach to. That's the ground right there. That's a ground plane right there. Alright, well, now let's just go back to here. Turn this back on. And knock the lamp over. What I've got over here on the side, in case you're curious, over on the side over in here, is I have the power supply out of a printer, Coleco printer, hooked up to the side of my bench here, and then I have my little doodad wiring here. This plugs into here. This would actually plug into a printer so I can use a printer on it and still run off of there. And I made an adapter also to plug into this to plug into a ColecoVision so I can power them all off of this one little power supply. So now let's just see. I just want to see, am I going to, if I hook, use those, am I going to get 5 volts? 5 volts. So I can use either one of these. I'm just going to use either one of them there and that's good. Alright, now to round up some parts. Okay, I'm back with all my parts I need. Piece of wire. One's red, one's gray. Red will be my power, gray will be my ground. A 330 ohm resistor. And the green LED. Now once my soldering iron is warmed up, I'll attach my wire and my LED. Well, I'm going to attach my resistor, then my wire. Alright, so what I did here, is I attached my resistor to the one spot right there where I found the power. 
And now what I need to do is I need to attach my positive line, which is the red side, to that resistor. Then I'm going to run my gray side, which is the come on, Bill, ground side, to that right there. And that gets me a nice clean connection. Or maybe even to, eh, maybe to that one right there. Who knows? We'll see. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now I've got that hooked up there, and I want to just put something on here to stop it from ever shorting. Can I put some shrink tubing on that? If I take this, can I get this over it? I do that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the Coleco method of fixing things. All right. We're well aware of the fact that Coleco loved their hot glue. So I'm going to do the same just to stop from moving around. I'm going to put some hot glue here. It's not that it's going to come off. I just don't want to move around or shorten. So this is Coleco's tried and true method of making sure nothing moved. So I was gonna do the same. And I get the little string boogers. And once that dries, then I will, well actually I could probably still work on it while it's drying. I need to strip the end off of the other piece of the wire, the other end of the wire, and hook it up to my LED. So let's give that a shot here. So let's give that a shot here. We're going to just, while that cools, eh, maybe I should just wait for it to cool completely. Yeah, boogies. All right, so give me this here. Come on. Just drip that out there. I'm going to want to use this this time, so I'm going to put this on before I do anything. Otherwise, I won't be able to do it later. Actually, I probably, yeah, I can't, I'll be able to get it over the LED. Never mind. Let's strip off a little bit into this, each one. What we're doing is the red connects to the round side. The gray connects to the flat side. Again, as I have said in many of my videos, I am not an electrician. So if you see me making a mistake, correct me in the comments. And always verify what you're doing before you do it. Don't just rely on what you see on somebody's YouTube channel. Especially when it comes to your computer. Always rely, always verify what they're doing. Make sure you know what they're doing and why they're doing it and if it's going to work. Because I could say I'm going to put a whole bunch of solder blobs on here and turn this thing into a PC compatible computer. Now watch. And when I'm all done, I can then edit, make it look like a PC compatible computer. Alright, so we got that piece there ready to have some glue attached to it. Don't go getting stuck in places there. Glue. Solder. Some solder attached. Come on, try to be cute and make it stay. Just stay. 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 It's like I'm talking to my cats. Oh, I need it. I'll do it the hard way. Alright, so we got that glued on there. And I just got to trim off the pigtails, but I'm just going to set it up to the side here. 
because I'm going to now plug her in and see if it lights up. But I'm not going to do that on camera. No, I can't let you see the reveal until it's done. Oh, suffice it to say it works, but I don't want you to see it yet. Now i got to trim off this excess pigtail. And I'm done with the soldering iron, so I can shut all that off and move things out of my way. Clean my table off a little bit, let the soldering iron cool off. Because now I need to figure out how I'm going to mount it. Well, I know I'm going to mount it. I just got to figure out exactly where I want to put it. So I'm going to stop the camera, do some tinkering, figure things out, and then come back on. Okay, I reassembled it some, and I snaked the wire down below the RF shields, because this is where I want to put it, right there. And what I'll end up doing is I'll end up using my rotary tool to drill a little hole right into the front cover so I can see it. And then once I have it down there, I use some double-sided sticky tape to attach it. See, I played with, I played, I, I kept positioning this to make sure nothing's going to touch. And that's probably the best place to do it. And if I use double-sided sticky tape, I can always remove the board later. So that's what I'm going to do now. But first I'm going to drill the hole with the, with the Dremel. Rotary tool for this, not Dremel, it's the generic version or the... Wally World version of it. So, I'm going to be a little off camera here because I want to put on the edge. I'm using the little rotary grinder. Not an actual drill bit. I'm going to wait and see if the show is free on the side. Yeah, the rotary grinder is slowly removing the plastic. Now I got a little dimple there. So now I'm going to this side with it. screwdriver as like an awl. You can go in the hole if necessary. And then I'm going to take this and slowly just go around the outside of it. Just to give a little recess. So it's not an edge. Alright. And the other side is All right, so we got that done there. Let's put some tools up out of the way. And now, clean my table up a little, my bench. Let's do some positioning. You know, I can do it this way too. I don't have to do that in there because this is in here. I can use that to see how, right now, how the LED is actually sticking out. I don't want it like that. I want it recessed. So I'm going to recess it in about a quarter of an inch. So right about there is where I want to recess it. So let me get my double sided sticky tape bone stuff. And where are you? Alright, so I have my double-sided sticky foamy tapey stuff. 
I just want a little strip of it here. I'm going to stick it over here along the side, like so. I'm going to take my LED. This is my excess wire. I don't know if I'm able to. I don't know if I can see it. I'm going to put my LED right there. I do believe that's going to be a nice little spot there. I think if I do it like that. I think I'm going to come up a little higher. I'm going to put another layer of double-sided sticky foamy tapey stuff on it. Just down the bottom though, not the top. But not the side. How about that one? Just a little bit more. All right, now I got the hole. Now to finish assembling it, clean up my mess. Again, I'm always forever cleaning up my messes. Well, let's finish assembling it now. almost forgot to put the reset buttons in, which I have done a number of times. Now seven long screws. around until I get it in here and then start tightening it in. I did the backwards turn on that if you noticed as I mentioned in other times. If you turn it backwards, I've got mail. I put that on my computer. I don't have AOL. I just put that on my Windows Live mail. One to be cute and two just to let me know when I got mail. It's probably junk. This one's stuck. All right, we'll go back in for that one. But yeah, it was just doing a ee, and I figured, you know, let's put the Windows Live or let's put the You've Got Mail on there. I was tempted to put um, the Crank Anchors one from Special Ed. Where he's sitting there arguing with the guy. I got mail, I got mail, I got mail, I got mail. That's no. Now I was tempted to put the South Park version of it. Where it goes, you got mail, you bastard. And I said, nah. My wife suggested, because we have an 11 month old at home, almost 11 month, my wife suggested I put Blue's Clues on there. Here's the mail, it never fails. And I actually did that once. It's about a 30 second long song. I did this uh, maybe seven or eight years ago. Actually, thinking back, maybe 10 years ago. But that's like a seven or eight second, or, uh, sorry. It's like a 30 second long song. Maybe 45, depending on the version of it. And I had my system set to check mail every minute. And this is when I used to get a lot, a lot of mail when I was doing website designs. And I'd hear it in the other room. 
Here's the mail, it never fails. When it comes, I want to win. When it keeps going on and on. Then I finally go, go mail. And like 10 seconds later, here's the mail, it never fails. That lasted a day, and I said, okay, enough of that. Because it wouldn't stop. It kept going and going. And maybe if I started getting a lot more email, I'd get rid of the, you got mail. Because I got mail. All right, so we got that much there. I'm purposely not showing you too much of what I've done in the front because I want to save that for the reveal. Let's put these in here. And then we put these in here. These magnetic screwdrivers are nice. I don't know if you watched my video where I was doing maintenance on the disk drive. I dropped the screws 13 times. Six, uh, four screws, 13 times. Four screws, 13 times. Yes. High record or high score. That's my best, my personal best. And as before, I decided, okay, I'm going to use the magnet, which I have a little magnet I can stick onto the screwdriver. And then I was just down recently down at the dollar store, and I saw this pack of four magnetic screwdrivers for a buck, and I said, you know what? I'm not like a mechanic, so I don't need to have to like get snap-on tools or craftsman or anything that's super strong, lasts forever. I just need something to work with. So I got them. I'm noticing that they're leaving a little black dust over places, this little rubber fabric is coming off them. But I guess eventually I'll run out of the black fabric that's on them. And I can keep blowing them away. Now I'm going to hook these up here. Big one goes to the back to 1A. Yeah. Then I'm going to get this one right here. This is 2A. Goes next. As I mentioned, I believe in another video, Coleco really dropped the ball designing this interface. I don't know why they didn't didn't make one single connector for each tape drive. Why it's got to be separate connectors, and why they got to be different sizes. And you can actually the back ones you can't, but these front ones you can actually plug them off by one line, offset so that they're not plugged in correctly, and probably ruin a tape drive. So they're all in there now. There's my LED. We'll show how it looks in a bit.